conditions. This also happened, another Virginia Tech incident happened here. How long would it take before the shooter is stopped? And how many people can he kill in that time? The truth of the matter is, gun free zones do not work. In fact, from what we see in history, they incite more tragedy than they do in Saudi. First things I want to do is I want to give you a fair example, and then I'll give you uh, a change that can possibly work, uh, the practicalities of it all, how it benefits it, and how it's much more better than going the same trend that we're going now. So the first example, as we all know that we have, Virginia Tech back in 2007, 33 people were killed. Uh, did you know that the shooting, the main body of the shooting took nine minutes to take place, and in that nine minutes, that Korean national, he shot 31 people, which is a lot, and he shot maybe one well, maybe half or double that and wounded. Uh, also, was it Virginia Tech campus? A year prior, they were they allowed to still carry firearms onto the campus. It wasn't until 2007 or six that they actually made a move to make the campus a kind of free zone. So, had they allowed to still firearms onto the campus or had people, you know, have firearms on campus to protect the students, the outcomes might have been a whole lot different. Uh, second thing that I want to give you is a change that could possibly work. What if we allow people to conceal carry or carry firearms? That in itself would be a major change as opposed to going to what we are trying to do now and then disarm people. Um, a lot of people conceal carry firearms or openly carry firearms would not only deter people from trying to do anything, but also give you individuals the right and the means to protect yourself and defend yourself if something happens. Uh, a lot of times when uh, people see firearms like, they always conceal carry it or openly carry it. it. It is exactly what people do. It's all by citizens. They want to protect themselves, defend themselves, should something happen and someone tries to go on a deranged rampage and start killing people for nameless reasons. Uh, there are the practicalities of it all. I mean, granted, it is a dangerous concept to have just anybody openly or, or conceal carry firearm, but at the same time, should it be regulated and should it be controlled. Uh, it could be much more feasible. For instance, some of the things that you're going to have to go through in order to conceal carry firearms. Go through training. Having proper training can be a major difference in just simply carrying a firearm and knowing how to use a firearm. Uh, training such as knowing proper situations in which you can defend yourself, proper situations in which uh, drawing your firearm would be considered uh, a right move. For instance, if you're in a verbal, verbal argument, Trying to get your point across, the other person stubborn and not listening to you, and you decide to draw your firearm, get your point across, and look here, I got, I got. You're, what I say is right, what you're saying is wrong. That is a no go, that is the wrong answer. Or should someone say, come at you with a knife or anything, or uh, say, for females especially, when you guys are going out at night or something around campus, and say there's a bunch of dudes coming by, and you don't know if they're in tennis, but they look at you like you're some kind of piece of meat, you're going to want to have some kind of way to defend yourself. You want to tell them to, you know, to back off, I mean, if you got a purse, you get one swing, and then two other dudes are going to come tap you. Wouldn't you rather have a gun? Tasers are another good uh, substitute, but tasers are only good for one one use. Most times, if you have the ones that shoot, they're good for 15 feet. You shoot them once, that's it. You're not going to have time to change your cartridge or do anything else. Having a gun gives you the opportunity to protect yourself. Not only that, depending on what you have, you'll have more than one round to go if need be. Um, with proper training, and then also with, uh, with being licensed. Much like the process of purchasing a firearm, you have to go through a dealer, you have to go through background checks through the National Institute uh, of Check System. Uh, should, you want to, should you decide to carry a firearm, it should be optional. But at the same time, you should also be subject to a test like that background check. But not so much the same process as purchasing a firearm, but a little bit more in-depth to your mental capacity, to your reasons, and so forth. Benefits of having such people carrying firearms. It would deter anybody from wanting to do something like that, or just take on the campus. Uh, you would have multiple people armed, unknown people. So if people were trying to do something, they wouldn't know who or who doesn't have a firearm. They wouldn't know who's the easier target that they can easily take it take down. Or who a difficult party would be to put up a fight. Uh, most times, people have two types of uh, reactions to a black and death situation. It's called a flight or fight situation. Most people, some people, people who don't have the means to protect themselves, most likely they will uh, flee or start running for the 
those who may have no ways to protect themselves. Another reaction is if people have the right or the means or the or the actions to do so to defend themselves, to protect themselves from anything, then they're gonna fight. Or so I hope at least. <laughs> uh, given that, I mean, should something happen, you know, it's, it's a reaction right there. You might have fighters who are gonna try to take this guy down, or him or her down, or people who run. Another benefit of it would be uh, here, I'll just go ahead and offer my comments. I think the hypothetical quit. I know, I can wait. All right, I think the hypothetical question that you have at the beginning and the uh, example with Virginia Tech is okay. It sounds like your argument's going to be about gun-free zones and the problems with having that as a solution to uh, crime, especially in places like college campuses. But your speech doesn't stay there very long. Uh, during the course of the presentation, you start drifting over into concealed carry laws, general ideas about guns, uh, and, and you lose your focus. Uh, you're very dependent on hypothetical examples on the first early points where you are sticking to the notion of these uh, gun-free zones. And even with the concealed carry laws, uh, again, you're very dependent on hypothetical examples. Uh, it doesn't sound like there's a lot of research in the speech. It sounds, you know, it sounds like uh, you've got some ideas in your head, you, you've got an impression, a belief that you have, but you haven't followed through in finding the information that would back it up and make it convincing. The only example that you have of a problem